Good morning, Minister Joseph Ferris here, and uh, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, thanking God for his goodness today and his grace. <coughs> great is the Lord, <coughs> and greatly to be praised. Ah. Uh, just want you to know there's an everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Ephesians, fourth chapter, lets us know there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Uh, many ideas out there about how to be saved. I just want to take a few moments to speak of the eternal plan of salvation, the eternal salvation, the one way to be saved. Uh, you repent of your sins, you get baptized in Jesus' name. It's a real simple thing. I thought today uh, uh, that I might have a bone to pick. Mm, pardon me. They say you got a bone to pick with some uh, body. But uh, the Lord has made the plan of salvation so simple, not even a fool should err or could, can err uh, in, in, in one way of looking at it. The plan of salvation has been made so simple. Uh, man has made many different, uh, there's many different religions. And uh, it's just amazing to see how many, in a way, to, uh, to see how many religions there are. Maybe I should say amazing to me, other Maybe some people think it's normal. <laughs> but if you look at all the denominations and all the ways to be saved, and even in the Bible, uh, you know, Noah preached a hundred years. Many of our people, some of you are looking at me now, say he preached 120 years. Uh, I don't know how you get 120 years out of a man. In Genesis, it says he was 500 years old, and he had Ham, Sham, and Japheth had his three sons, or what, whatever, Sham, Ham, and Japheth, whatever the ages, whoever's the oldest. And then, uh, then it says, you know, when it was about the flood, uh, about the time the flood was uh, coming, since he was 600 years old. So I was pretty good in math. So if he was 500 years old when the Lord told him to build the ark and when the flood came, he was 600 years old. Uh, that's 500, 600 minus 500 is 100 years. So he preached 100 years, but people, I mean, people that I would, I guess if I was uh, in real bad straits in probably many areas, the people that argue with me are strong and tough, they, they know how to pray, and, and, and I guess they know how to fast. They know how to preach. A couple, couple of uh, saints that uh, say it's 120 years. Uh, I don't know what school of mathematics they went to and how they get 120 out of 600 minus 500 equals 100 in, in the math, uh, you know, 
I went to school 37 on the east side of Indianapolis and Tech High School, uh, also on the east side of Indianapolis. And, uh, you know, the basic math that I took, I guess I took the basic math of uh, multiplication or addition or subtraction at 37. <laughs> I was taking algebra and geometry at Tech High School, but... So, uh, this is like the plan of salvation. I mean, these saints are saints. I believe they've been baptized in Jesus, they filled with the Holy Ghost, like me, uh, living uh, for God. I mean, and these were preachers. <clears throat> these were preachers. Uh, they were sisters. And that's another issue when you get into things. Uh, the uh, the woman, the woman, but I believe men are doing it too, saying 120 years. So we have the plan of salvation. That's we confuse. I guess that's how we confuse it. Uh, I don't know, but and some people might say, well, that don't make this it the same thing, the plan of salvation and Noah's Ark or how long Noah preached. But I'd like to use it because of the confusion. You know, here's the sincere people. I guess one of them, I guess, has uh, had, uh, had a big house and a big car, maybe a, lot of, a reasonable amount of money. The other maybe lived in an apartment. But, you know, had, had, I guess, a nice amount of children and uh, was, a, was a pulpit pit minister. So here we are. And, uh, you know, they're spewing out 120 years. So I'm using that as an example for this. Maybe this is how people... That can be, maybe people can be taught wrong or not, nobody ever gets it straightened out about the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. You come in my Father's name. You receive me not. Another come in his own name and you'll receive him. Uh... Jesus has said in the scripture, something like that. Uh, he says uh, how he's going to go and send the comforter. Uh, the comforter is what we know as the Holy Ghost, which shall come in my name. Who's my name? What is my name? Jesus. So there was one saying that. We know Jesus' name was Jesus. He says that uh, bring forth the, a son, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Uh, so Jesus is the name of the Son. Uh, he said he comes as his Father's name. Jesus is the name of the Father. And he, the Holy Ghost he'll send in his name. Jesus is the name for the Holy Ghost. So that's one name, Jesus. So then he tells the people who baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. People, I guess, in English teachers and things, I've heard stories about the and of, the and of and the and of. You connect that. You're supposed to connect that somehow. And uh, But my knowledge is, you know, name of the Father is Jesus, name of the Son is Jesus, the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. So if the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus, when Jesus is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, it just sounds so, oh, I guess uh, uh, medieval or so, uh, you know, like it's you're really doing something so profound to say, Father. I'm a father. <laughs> I'm a father. 
I'm a son. Uh, I have the spirit, the Ferris, I guess so. The Ferris spirit or the genes, the DNA, the genes, the, the blood. Uh, but that's not my name. They say, oh, there's some DNA, Ferris DNA. Or they might not know what my name is, you know, just saying, oh, there's human DNA or African-American DNA. And maybe a little Indian or whatever. Whatever, you know, there's a TV program. You find out that you're not 100%. A lot of people are not 100% of what they might think they are. They may want to be black and they got a lot of white in them. Or they may want to be white and got some Asian Indian in them or something. So, anyway... Uh, we 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 we're dealing with the Holy Ghost baptism in Jesus' name. It's one way to be saved, people, and I I just don't know what to tell you uh, to get you. Uh, I do the sign out in front of the church. I, I set the letters in place for various markings for. Information. Sometimes I've thought about trying to put something out there. It'd be like, get your behind in here, you know. Get your, you know, get get your face in the place, or you know, something in this place, because this is this is the truth, you know. This is this is what we believe. Excuse me. This is what we believe. It's the truth. But you know what? Some of the things I'd put out there, I might lose my little job I got out there, or you know, my little uh, job. Not that I'm paid for, but it's like my job, something I've done for twenty, maybe twenty-two years or more. See, if you don't get your uh, face up in here, your black face, your white face. <laughs> You know, something to try to draw the people, you know, say, I'm talking, excuse me, I'm talking about you, whatever color you are. I'm talking about you. But, uh, you know, then you want, you know, maybe say, hey, can you say it nice? Could you get your uh, very wonderful face up in here to learn about how to be saved? It's just one way to be said. It's something, ain't it? One way. And just see me talking to you all like this is, what, hundreds of ways? People are Hindus and Buddhists. And sometimes the people in the church have changed and gone over into that kind of stuff. They're doing that kind of stuff. And then after you get baptized in Jesus' name, you get the Holy Ghost. This is this is the plan. You got you got so many ways, so many ways that you that aren't the way. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me." So even uh, you know when you say, "In the name of the Father." You're already out of order. Because Jesus said you can't even come to the Father but by me. I guess, excuse me, if, if a person wanted to go to God, wanted to be baptized, you know, I guess the way to do it would have been, even if that was correct, you would have to go in the name of the Son. I baptize you in the name of the Son and the Father and the Holy Ghost, or the name of the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the Father. You know, if it were to be done that way, because you can't come to the Father but by me. So you say, in the name of the Father, 
But of course, if you have the understanding, the name of the father, like some father, right, right, say, you know, and people get all mixed up. I guess it's say different things. Somebody might say the name of the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost just because that's the way God said it in the Scripture. And then they'll say name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then and, and, and maybe some will say in Jesus' name too. But there's a Scripture, another Scripture in the, in the Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. In all thy getting, so no matter what you got or think you got, <laughs> get some get some understanding with it. You get baptized in Jesus' name, and then you get the Holy Ghost. Or sometimes you get the Holy Ghost, like Cornelius. What was that, Acts, the 10th chapter? You get the Holy Ghost, and then you get baptized in Jesus' name. It's so simple. And then it's like, well, why, if it's so simple, why don't we do it? Why it ought to be, I guess there ought to be a church of a million, maybe maybe a, uh, close to a billion people. You know, if you get 10% of the world, if, if there's 7 to 8 billion people in the world, get 10% of that. Uh, well, see, I've got this mask here. It's just so much to talk about. I don't know why it's taking me so long. I've had YouTube uh, capabilities, I guess, for years now. Got a few YouTubes on here. But uh, I don't know why I haven't taken the time. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't time. But see, we, now we got a virus. I got I got a mask here. Uh, this virus is killing folk, according to uh, you know the news and things. And uh, it's just so much to know, and there's different perspectives on so many things. I had the perspective of. In America, around a thousand people die a day of the coronavirus. But it's like they forgot about the eight thousand people, seven seventy nine hundred people that have been dying every day, on a, you know on an average. Uh, so seventy nine hundred and another thousand is eighty nine hundred. Uh, Maybe you say the coronavirus has upticked a little more than a thousand, so it's 9,000. What about the 8,000 that was already dying? It shows you the news is biased, very biased. They will show maybe if somebody, a sports figure, an actor, or real famous, a person that has a lot of uh, maybe people that... Uh, think about them do, and talk about them. They may show a few of them. Sometimes, I know we've seen, you know, let's just say we, we might see a pastor that has passed. And, uh, you know, they're not in the news. Not not every one. Maybe, maybe once in a while one or two people in our phase of living in the way we believe they, uh, it's covered then other times it's like the news doesn't even cover the passing of a pastor of a large 1,800 member church in the city influence in, uh, of the city influencing the city it's like but they talk about other things and so now they're talking about coronavirus, which is only one eighth or about an eighth or a ninth of the, maybe, maybe well, maybe a little over 10%, if it's nine, one uh, out of, uh, out of uh, a thousand a day, you know, and 7,900, 7,913 averagely die a day. So we're talking... You know, one, uh, what, about 
maybe 12%. What about the other 86% or 88%? And, you know, a few of them, like I say, if they're real famous or something, they, they get counted. So it's just, you know, it's different perspectives on how you look at things. And uh, so same way with salvation. I mean, it's different perspectives. But the problem is, what will the Lord accept when he comes? What will he accept when he comes for you or me? Will he accept our excuses? Well, this is what we learned. And uh, very a friend recently. Excuse me, trying to get her saved. A friend, a friendly, I mean, acquaintance, maybe not a, a, a lifelong friend, but somebody I met me around the church I attend. And, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, it's, that's what they, she was taught. She's going to stay with the doctor. She comes to our church, and this is, the, I guess the devil and the demons can, uh, maybe they have a party every day because of the way they have taught people to believe, and uh, the way they have taught people to believe, and uh no, they just won't accept. This is what we're dealing with, whether you have the truth or whether you're reaching for the truth. So many ideas on what the truth really is. I, I just don't know. Uh, but getting baptized and being immersed in water uh, what they call buried, where they put you 100%. You don't want your hand to come up or your foot to come up. You want you want to be immersed in water in the name of Jesus. And then you want to say, hallelujah, what they did for me, is we said, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sometimes we might have said, Jesus, 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 trying to help the tongue. Uh, the tongue's the most unruly member of the body. And there are scriptures in the Bible. And the altar workers will take you to some of these scriptures. Uh, the tongue is the most unruly member. And how the ship, a big old ship can be stuck, uh, 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 steered, hallelujah, with uh, a small, I guess a rudder, whatever you call it, and and the and this and that, how the tongue can be so so small, and uh, it can set on the course. One place says some of the about it's uh, set on fire. Uh, like hell, fire, type thing. I'm not quoting exactly like it's saying, but it speaks about the tongue being unruly. And and uh, so you get the tongue, that could be the, you know, the reason that the Lord chose the tongue to prove that he's got control of the man. It's the most unruly member. So when you, he speaks through you, uh, you letting him have the spirit give utterance as proof that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit has taken over uh, and or has the authority in that that person. Scripture says, "What does it say? Whosoever will let him come." It shows that you have a will to come, not. The Lord's going to make you come. Now, sometimes the power may get so strong on you, and uh, your yielding, you know, may get so strong that it's like he's taking over, taking, taking you, uh, guiding your ship, moving you, uh, 
uh, but don't play with that. Thank God when he's got you, or if he takes you, because the Holy Ghost ain't the devil. The devil may take you, oh, I got you, say you first get possessed with demons. He may be hard to get, your devils, I mean, uh, or spirits, evil spirits, they, they, may, they may have a time getting free of those things. But you be careful when you get the Holy Ghost. And think, well, God's got me now. I can just kind of, kind of. No, you, you have to. It's you might say a mutual. Sometimes people do this with the eyes, saying, you know, like between us. us. You better do your, well, your one, whichever finger is yours. In the, when you're doing this, whichever finger. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to give no, no, no. I think certain fingers. Is they saying, you know, something uh, perverse or evil? I'm not trying to use that. I'm just saying, when you do this, and people do this with their eyes looking at you. So, no, maybe, you know, what? Maybe I don't know. There's different fingers mean. So, if I put up just one finger, that's going to mean. So, I repent. I'm not trying to say nothing wrong with my fingers. I'm just saying, you better walk. We've got to walk. We've got to walk with God ourselves. We can't, if we let the devil take us over, then we're good, you know, and we're lost <laughs> in that sense. I mean, we, we can just let him work and kind of do our thing. Like I said, broad is the way leads to destruction. Many there be to go in there at. So if you let the devil take you over and you just kind of live your life and, and enjoy it, <laughs> excuse me, when he's having his way and showing his power through you. Yeah, you could do it. But with God, you got to walk a clean life. And uh, they say that the uh, uh, gifts come without repentance. And that's, uh, to whatever extent, that may be, you know, what people deal with. But when you want to see them, manifest power of the Holy Ghost, like when you get saved, you had to do everything you had to do to be clean and perfect, uh, holy as you could, it, it coming to God, you know, uh, at least sincerely and in a repentance, repent, repent, repentance, uh, in coming to him in repentance, in a repentful, repentful way, full of repentance, and then you get that, maybe God gives you some extra it's power. You can go out and do something great for a short, you know, maybe a few hours, a few days, a few weeks. But don't, when that starts to wane, that's, that's all right, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, if that's what you want. But you got to know that God has a time for things. And, and, and those, you know, you still got to walk clean before God. You still got to walk perfect before God. You got to, you know, for each of Bible, you got to pray. You gotta fast. You gotta, uh, 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 you know, fast and pray, read your word, obey the. You know, there's specific things God gives people to do. You know, He may tell you, you know, and it's not like it's just things to do in your regular life. Uh, he may tell you to take care of the pastor, or He may call him a shepherd. Take care of my shepherd. And uh, pray. He may tell you to pray an hour a day. Tell you things to do. Tell you to pray. If you're a musician in the church, tell you to practice so many hours a day. Or maybe if you've you know, got a lot of things going on, he might, only, he might only have you practice 30 minutes or an hour. I'm just using that as an example. These, some of these, I've experienced this type of thing from God. And maybe somebody in another field other than music, he might tell them to uh, uh, read, uh, you know, uh, maybe the ministry similar to Paul. Or read Apostle Paul writings an hour a day. Or read Apostle Peter's writings an hour a day. Read and study. And uh, so, of course, somebody may say, well, Jude only... Got a small book at one. Uh, couldn't read that hour. I mean, it wouldn't take. 
Well, you might say uh, study Jude uh, periodically. You might not say an hour. They could choose a small book. But there's seven billion people on in on the planet, or more, or less somewhere. And so, gotta tell you what to do, baby. As the mothers and fathers, would, they call you baby. Gotta tell you what to do. But the thing is, are we doing it? Am I doing my hours of music, my hour of prayer, taking care of the shepherd? And of course, somebody said, well, that was years ago. Is that what he wants you to do now? And those are good questions. If you walk with God, and say 30 years ago, he said, take care of my shepherd. It's 30 years later, you have another pastor or, or two, uh, since he told you, maybe, you know, if a per hypothetically, another pastor, or maybe some, and some, somebody else might be two pastors. In my case, it was, it's another pastor. So what are you supposed to do? And what does that mean to take care? Does that mean to pray for them, fast for them? Since I was a musician, was that, did that mean try to help them, uh, you know, back them up on the organ or something? You know, you might have different thoughts when God tells you things. But all right, people, this is, this is Brother Ferris, Minister Ferris from Zion Tabernacle. I, I, I'm very concerned uh, because the world has so many ways to be saved. And even the church seems like it's forgetting some, sometimes, uh, uh, or maybe not as strong as I would like to see it. Maybe they're not totally forgetting. Hopefully, they're not totally forgetting. But the plan, this is the one plan of salvation. And uh, it's just so simple. A fool can't err, shouldn't err. Why, why are we having such a hard time? Baptize people in Jesus' name. Repent and be baptized. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Then you've got all the things of how to live, how to dress, how what to wear. Oh. And people, people don't want to do nothing. Uh, it seems, you know, I mean, the masses, and maybe it's just people, like there's a saying, what, the squeaky hinge gets the oil. Maybe it's because uh, the squeaky hinge is getting the oil. And, and, and maybe somebody else, like what the prophet said, he had 7,000 that hadn't vowed they need a veil. His, his servant was like, oh, we're... At a great loss, and we really, you know, we're really in trouble here. And uh, was it Gehazi or someone, one of the other prophets of uh, of, the, of Elijah or Elisha? And they were saying something about one of the prophets. We ain't, you know, seven thousand. So we got to maybe, maybe, and then they used to be. In, excuse me, presidential elections, they would call it the great silent majority. The great silent majority. You know. Uh, so, so, so maybe the saints are adhering to, to truth. And they just, the squeaky, one, the squeaky ones, the ones that we hear about, uh, pardon me, seemingly they're not uh, necessarily adhering to, or they have a problem. Father taught him a lesson, or he was he wasn't the teacher, but but he was the uh, he went to a seminar back I think it was in ninety one. They were teaching on, I guess some kind of way they got into teaching about sex, and uh, he said. These people must believe. And then, of course, when you listen 
to that, you're like, who's the, these people? Must believe you can be perverted. Must believe you can live ungodly. I was like, well, wait a minute. Who was in the class, Bishop Ferris? Oh, this was a ministerial class. This wasn't you, you know, the church sent you downtown to talk to uh, ministers from all denominations, and y'all, you know, they wanted everybody to come together. No, I, I believe this was an apostolic class about sexuality, certain things, some kind of way something came up. And they had a medical doctor uh, teaching that, you know, just about, I guess, every, pretty much everything was all right, pretty much. Uh, that people do, that's what Bishop Ferris stood up and said, no, foul ball, everything isn't all right. For, the, for, for you to do, even with your own companion, everything uh, is not all right. So I guess people have so many ideas on what's right and wrong. <laughs> so anyway, get baptized in Jesus' name. Get the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues. The Spirit of God gives you utterance. Repent of all your sins. Walk and live for God. God will give you specific instructions on what you personally, you want your seven billion, seven billions, uh, 699 billion, or, whatever, or, or, or 699, or six uh, billion, 999, whatever, thousand. Five billion, whatever your number is, give you specific things to do. And those things, some people might say, if I was Adam, we wouldn't be in this state. And sometimes I guess we've, many of us have felt perhaps that way. Uh, but there are certain things that happen in each of our lives that maybe if things were different, wouldn't happen, wouldn't have, you know, we would have done different, would have did better. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So whatever that, whatever shortness that we've come, God knows what it is. God knows uh, that maybe we wouldn't have went that way, just like an Adam. Adam might say, if the woman hadn't had it, gave me that, the uh, fruit, I wouldn't have ate it. I wouldn't have took it. But it was the woman. I've been through things. If my wife hadn't have done at the time, I don't believe I would have done any of the things I did that were so detrimental seemingly to me personally. And there's many, uh, all the seven billion, maybe not, a lot of them are younger, so maybe there's five billion people in my, in cases like me, maybe not as detrimental as, as Adam and Eve or Joseph and, and his wife at the time. Maybe it wasn't as detrimental as that. And some things were maybe worse than, than my case, you know, maybe much worse. Or not as bad in my case. Of course, Adam and Eve was, you know, that took us into where we needed a savior. Uh, but anyway, just, you know, do what you're supposed to do. And repent, and if you've gone too far, messed up, repent. And uh, remember, it's one way, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Obey the things God tells you specifically to do. And uh, after you get baptized in Jesus' name, after you repent, get baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, God gives you specific things for you personally to do in your Christian walk, in your walk with Christ, in your holy walk. And do those things daily. Yeah, and there's, there's another thing, confession of sins. It's just so much, and different ideas on how to do that. And why, how, you know, some people say you go straight to God. Some people say you can... Uh, you know, maybe just just pray. You know, if you do do wrong, 
But you got to realize, Scripture says uh, about, uh, let him that is spiritual restore such a one. If you need restoration, you need to go to somebody spiritual. Many pastors want it to be them and uh, or their designee. Sometimes they'll designate. And it may be for your own good that it's them. Some people you might want to go to might tell the whole world. And that may be detrimental to you. So it's, you just got to be careful and prayerful and do what God tells you to do. In Jesus' name, have a great life. Jesus' name.